Hello, everybody. Um, just wanted to continue on that ornamental work uh, track that I've been going down. And I made this ring not too long ago, and it's got this scroll that goes from 10 to 2 on the ring. And let me get a closer picture of the, the scroll here. And it also has a leaf that comes off. And uh, it's just a simple little scroll. But I want to show you guys how I made it. And let me switch over to... Rhino here and here's the ring itself and basically what I did is I took this patch of surface and called smash and laid it out here and then took the edge of the surface offset it and then made this little this little scroll to go around and then float it back on so that's what we'll be doing in this uh, quick little demo so let me get out a new Rhino here and basically to start we're going to take an arc and i'm going to make everything based off of one millimeter let me turn my grid snap on here so make a one millimeter arc there make another arc here that's two millimeters but we're going to have one and one and then make another arc here and have that go all the way around and actually what I'm going to do is have it go from here all the way to 135 degrees so that it's on a 45 from here to here. And I've just found that to be easier for me to save this off and then add it in uh, to where I want to lay it out. And I'll show you guys why in just a second. So the next thing I want to do is take this curve and move the gumball over to the corner. And I'm going to hold down alt on the keyboard before I start dragging and now you can see by my mouse there's a little plus mark and then I'm going to push shift to lock it to a 90 degree and let go and now I have a duplicate of it and I just need to put one more arc from the midpoint here to the midpoint there and to do that I'm going to need to switch C planes and we'll say arc and again the center is there midpoint to midpoint Okay, and that is the that is everything I need to get started. I would save this off. I have it saved off uh, so that I can bring it in and quickly add it to things in the future. So if I go over here, I already have uh, you know kind of a, a dummy line here that would represent the edge of a, a ring. So I'm just going to take and set this. Let's say I wanted to make this a one and a half millimeter pipe. Um, I'm just going to say 1.5 and offset this. And now the distance between these two curves is 1.5 millimeters. The distance between here and here is one. But this is going to be a one and a half. And as I showed you guys in the other uh, ornamental videos, when I call orient, I'm just going to say scale 3D. And the point I want to reference is this, which remember the, the angle from this to this is 45 degrees. I'm going to come back in and grab it at that intersection. If it makes you feel more comfortable, you can go to your zero mark, hit tab, and then come back out and find the intersection. And then we're going to come over here and grab that point and that point, and it scaled it for us just beautifully so that now this is one and a half millimeter distance, one and a half, and one and a half. So next we just need to start creating our surfaces so the first thing i'll do is call network surface i'm going to grab this i'm going to grab that and that tell it okay and boom there's our little cap and now i want to revolve this around here and i'm going to use a rail revolve and I'm going to do the surface edge. Oops. Yes, that was right. I'm going to do my surface edge. My rail is going to be this piece of curve that goes 180 degrees. And then my axis is going to start here and I want it to go straight up. But my C plane, you know, my mouse is locking to the C plane. So the way I get around this is go back to that point, put your mouse directly over it, hold down control, click, and now you're in elevator mode. Now you are perpendicular to the C plane. 
So you just click there and there's your revolve axis. So all we have left to do is um, sweep this profile along these two curves. So if we look right here, we see this stops here and that stops there. I actually want this to come all the way around to there. So I'm going to join those two together. And then this, I want to go around to this point, but this curve goes all the way from here to there. So I need to call subcurve. And I want to make sure copy is on. And I want to say from that endpoint to, where's my endpoint? Let me turn intersection off just to make sure. There's my endpoint. Okay. So now I can take this and this and join those together. All right. And there is my rails to move this profile down. Now, I've done this enough to know that this is not going to work. But I'm just going to say sweep to, grab this and this. Tell it that is the profile curve and let it go. And you can see that along the U direction, the V's are not rotating as well as I would like them to rotate. So the simple way to fix that is just say uh, to orient a profile curve so that you can control the rotation. So I'm going to call orient and I could grab that surface edge. Nope, I can't. So I've got one that's identical right here. I want to grab that curve and I'm going to orient it based off of copy and scale is on at endpoint, although scale doesn't matter because we're uniform through here. But sometimes I will um, control point edit this to make it get wider out here. I keep it uniform through here and then out here I may make it wider. Um, but for this one, it doesn't matter because we're we're uniform with the part the whole way through. All right. Now I have my reference point set. Now I need to set the target. So this surface edge will work just fine. We need to put one right here in the middle. I'm going to grab that and come over here and realize that I don't have any O snaps to work here because my midpoint is somewhere over here. We trim this off at a 45. So my midpoint's over here. This is a great place to use your tab lock because I do have a great reference point in the other direction. So I'm going to hit tab and that will lock it along this line. Come over here and click. And then the last thing I need to do is find that endpoint and that endpoint. And you know, I should put one down here at the end just for, just for safety so I don't have a screw up later. Okay. So now we can do a sweep to, and I'm fairly comfortable this is going to work. Grab that rail and that rail. Here's our first one. And I'm going to grab closest to this rail the whole way through. This one, this one, and then our surface edge. Tell OK. And that looks pretty darn good. And all right. So now we have... Uh, a very simple, a very simple um, scroll. So join this together, and there's two ways you can finish this out. I'm going to put one over here, and I'm going to finish this one one way, and I'm going to finish that one another way. So for this one, I'm going to take and put a plane underneath it. Oops. And I'm going to draw a line from that end to that end. Grab these two and call trim. And cut away the rest of that. Now I can join that together. Call cap. And now I have one closed poly surface. Easy enough to do. Uh, for this one, I can take, and let me switch to another construction plane here. 
and I'm going to mirror it around to the other side and join these two together and call cap. And again, resulting in one closed poly surface. So there's a couple of scrolls finished two different ways. And you guys can use these uh, wherever you need. I just find it this easy to remember um, how to do because I may go a month between making a scroll and this is just easy to remember. So uh, save this off. Um, so you can easily import it in and then it'll be very easy for you to add a little boundary uh, to your rings or whatever else you're making. If you like this video, head on over to 3D CAD Jewelry where you can stay up to date on everything CAD CAM related. Thanks guys.